Hey, what's up guys? Rago here with Dirt and Iron. I'm super stoked today because in this video I'm going to show you a time lapse of several months of our hard work. We were rebuilding my friend's bike. Dallas, that you know from my channel, he's helping me a lot with uh, different videos, with the reviews and some other things on my channel. He has 2014 Husky 350 FE that he had for our last five years. He put 240 hours on this bike. He's uh, racing it bunch, he's uh, riding really hard. As you can see, the bike has a lot of scratches and it's just a well-used bike. So my plan for this bike is to take everything completely apart and go through every single thing, put a big bar on this bike, uh, put a Vortex ignition and just make it way better than it was before. Well, it's going to take some time, so just sit back, relax and enjoy the build. This 2014 uh, Husky 350 is actually the first year uh, Husaberg became Husqvarna. So it's pretty much uh, identical to previous year Husaberg. One thing I want to stress guys, when you are taking apart your bike like this, uh, take a bunch of pictures. Because uh, if you have the bike with the starter and battery and lights, uh, there is a lot of uh, relays and your wire harness. There is a lot of uh, different sensors in, on your bike. So you want to make sure that you remember where they belong. When you are putting your bike back together, you would know what to do. So we did uh, take a lot of pictures and uh, also, you know, we have these videos, detailed videos. So we definitely uh, will need to go back to those videos once we are assembling the bike back. So as I said, you know, this uh, composite subframe is just so different to take it apart. It has several parts. It's not like your standard aluminum subframe. As you can tell, the bike is really uh, well ridden. It has uh, all kinds of different scratches. And as I said before, 240 hard hours Dallas was racing it. And, and you know, even when he just rides uh, with me, uh, we always uh, try to, you know, push it and ride really hard. So you can see the swing arm there and uh, pretty much everywhere, uh, a lot of scratches. And uh, he didn't do anything with the bearings. He didn't uh, take the bearings apart. He didn't uh, regrease them. So I think there will be a lot of, uh, a lot of work we need to do on all the bearings and everything on the bike uh, to make it feel pretty much brand new again and I'm confident that we can make it feel better than new. So you know it's a little refreshing to work together because usually I'm alone in the garage but this is uh, the project we work together with Dallas so that things are a little easier. Uh, I'm uh, mo more of a time uh, uh, behind the camera and Dallas is doing the work and I also help you know uh, with uh, uh, this assembly and uh, just kind of two guys uh, running everything is way easier so we were able to actually take this bike apart in less than two hours even though it's probably the most uh, complicated bike uh, yet that I've been working on since it's uh, you know well, there's a lot of electric parts but uh, at the same time you know we are two guys working so it was a little faster to take everything apart so we're almost done with the bike and uh, you know the next the big thing would be to clean everything uh, and uh, inspect everything, see what needs to be replaced and then uh, send the frame over to San Diego powder coating and get it powder coated. We decided to go with the baby blue color we think will look very unique and will be very different. And then everything aluminum will get hydroblasted, everything that uh, we will use stack will get really nicely clean and detailed and we also gonna use a bunch of new parts as well. Engine, the most important part. Here Brad from Parapros is uh, going to help us to assemble the engine. He's like the, the best mechanic around and he's my friend as well. So, you know, there's no brainer that I always use Brad when I need to assemble the engine. Uh, we are using a uh, hot rod, uh, main uh, rod for the, uh, for the, the crankshaft that has been done by Protec here in, uh, in Murrieta. 
and then replacing all the bearings and pretty much all the seals and everything uh, that needs attention on the engine we are replacing. We also inspected the uh, transmission, the oil pump gears and, and everything looked good. Uh, with 240 hours still this engine looks pretty good. So we're just putting uh, things back together and uh, you know making sure that there is uh, no, no, no cracks, uh, no little things uh, that are worn out. So everything putting back together is in really good conditions. It's really fun watching Brett uh, putting things back together. And this is a uh, outer uh, clutch basket that is stuck and it's really good condition. This uh, KTM and Husky baskets are really strong. Everything else we used uh, hints on. So you can tell that we have full hints on clutch setup uh, that will last for another few hundred hours. It's, this is uh, the best thing you have now on the market. And you know, we just wanted to go with the best. So everything is hints on up there in the clutch. And this is the big thing, we are going to use 366 big bore kit from Cylinder Works. So it's not going to be 350 anymore, it's going to be 366. That will give us a little bit of power pretty much everywhere. So with this change and also with the hot cams, we would have to do also the vortex ignition and get the bike on the dyno. Alright guys, so we got all these new parts for the head, everything is brand new as you can see, uh, it says KTM but it's Husky, <laughs> you guys know it's the same, it's the same stuff right? So we got new valves, new springs, new seats, everything, we're gonna, we're gonna clean this now real nice and then we'll be able to start putting everything back together so we'll be good for another couple hundred hours here. Yeah, the valve train didn't look very good after 240 hours so we had to replace everything and for this we went OEM and got it directly from uh, Husqvarna, KTM, same stuff and we put it all together so this head would uh, would be really good and, you know as i mentioned before uh, we would need to go uh, on a dyno since we are doing a big board 366 and also using a hot cam stage too so for that we will uh, later go to twisted development and jamie will put a bike on a dyno and uh, having vortex ignition uh, will be able to dial it in and get uh, maximum uh, power, maximum usable power out of this uh, new components and new engine that uh, you know we're putting together. If you want to see the detail video, this is just a, you know like a fast uh, kind of flying through the engine build. But I have a detail video where we talk a lot about the details, about the things we we are doing. So I'll put the link below uh, in the description you guys can see all the videos that uh, we made uh, from this uh, 366 build. You can find the video below. And that completes the engine and now it's time to start putting everything back together. So you see this uh, baby blue color came back from San Diego powder coating. I think the frame looks amazing. We went with a factory links, bearings uh, for the swing arm, for the linkage, uh, installed everything, greased everything. Also we did new uh, steering stem bearing and uh, install everything, you know, new races into the frame. So once you do that kind of work, uh, everything will feel uh, pretty much brand new. It will be super tight and smooth and uh, there is no, no clanking noise, noise, nothing like that. It will feel really good. It is a little extra work, but I highly recommend if you are doing a rebuild on the bike to go through all the bearings, uh, replace them if you can and regrease them, clean everything, make sure that everything is uh, tip top 100%. It's a simple way to drive them in uh, using your vise and you know some some tools you have laying around the shop. Different kinds, different size socket will do the job. I'd be a little creative, like right here, you know, we use a little extension to drive it in, and uh, also packing. Uh, I like to pack it by hand. It's a little old school way. It takes time, but I kind of like to do that. You know, you see all the all the grease that goes inside into the bearing. 
assembling the steering stem head, uh, putting triple clamps on. There's a bunch of little uh, little things that you need to follow through with all the uh, gaskets. And TM design work, uh, chain and slider, that's the thing I always use uh, for the bikes. It's super durable and looks pretty good. And also we are using bulletproof guard for the swing arm and the fast way linkage protector which is actually a dog bone it's really beefy and it allows you to actually change uh, the height of the bike if you like to of course don't forget to grease your axles that go into your uh, linkage uh, into the swing arm, into the wheels, pretty much all the bolts that uh, you are putting into this bike when you assemble it, don't forget to put the grease on them. And then uh, of course, you know, torque it uh, to the specs. And my dog buddy is always in the way. I look at that beautiful uh, blue color, I, I'm in love with this color. Maybe in the, in the next build I do I will oh, use it again. I think it just uh, fits so well with all the theme we are doing. We have a bunch of uh, works connection blink, uh, like that uh, steering stem bolt uh, and everything else, the little pieces are black anodized from works connection. This is bulletproof design, it's a shark fin that comes uh, with everything, you just, you just put your brake caliper on it and then install it uh, on the frame. This is a really good looking uh, guard and it's pretty sturdy and durable, I really like this uh, part. And also works connection axle blocks, installing that, it's, it's stronger and it also looks nicer. This task impact wheels, uh, black and blue, with super sprack sprocket uh, and uh, task uh, new brake rotors. Uh, it's just a really nice combo. When you put it together, it, it just fits. It looks really nice. You see how the, all the aluminum is nice and clean. We hydroblasted everything. So that's the way to go when you are doing a build like this. Uh, hydroblast is definitely the way to go for your aluminum. Black and blue task uh, foot controls brake pedal and also for a shifter. We are using IMS foot pegs here, have really good grip and uh, they look pretty good too. You're not gonna slide around when you are standing on the foot pegs. Also a little bit harder on the boots but hey, <laughs> you cannot have both. We are going to install this bulletproof piece for the front rotor, but actually we got the wrong size, it's the wrong gear. Uh, we realized that our uh, axle doesn't go through, it, the hole is too small. We had to take it down and then uh, we ordered another one. So we'll install it later in the video. Trail tech fan, it's really handy. I really uh, you know, su suggest you guys get that if you are building a bike that you uh, use for trail riding. This this thing kicks in. Uh, you set it. Uh, we set it for 180 uh, Fahrenheit. It kicks in and helps to cool down the bike. All the cables uh, are new from uh, all balls. The bike, uh, you know, the throttle and all the other cables that we were using. Actually, not that many because these hydraulic clutch. But yeah, these are brand new from all balls. It works really nice, nice and smooth. We also grease them a little bit before we install them. And it's the 
subframe that comes from like it's a three different part when you put it together it looks kind of bulky and it's just so different than everything else I was working with before but once you put it together uh, it's actually really nice I like it that it's a little bit unique and it looks a little different it's not bad to be different sometimes right and this is just the stock subframe we cleaned it really nice and make sure it's uh, matching it's nice and shiny It'll match everything else that we have on the bike Dallas was doing all the cleaning setting up our shifter also task black and blue fits with our overall theme of the bike now we are going to install a clutch and this little cover you see that's just the handmade cover for uh, when we wash the engine we didn't have the clutch there so Dallas just made that in, in case you are wondering so installing the, the clutch now and also we have the Endor engineering cover protector for the clutch And we are using this uh, kickstand from Fastway. I think this is one of the best kickstands on the market. It, I love it that the spring is uh, internal, you cannot see it. And it looks really sturdy, it looks really nice. The design is really cool. And once you once you open it, it you know doesn't doesn't go back. It's it's really a good product that stays where it's supposed to be all the time. Installing all the uh, handlebar features, the, the clutch, the brake, uh, grips. Uh, these are ODI grips that you just lock on and you know changing the bling uh, going with works connection black anodized we will be replacing the fluids and doing also new brake lines a little bit later you notice we got on our fly racing handlebars black color they look pretty good Keep putting another works connection pieces on everything you can you can do we we try to do everything so you know, these little details they they change how the bike looks of course we went with full fmf system a header and a pipe with a spark arrestor since this is a off-road bike we need to have it here in california So time to put on the wire harness. Uh, this actually took uh, quite some time, you know, to make sure that everything is where it's supposed to be. And as I mentioned in the beginning, uh, the pictures we took and the videos we had uh, from the you know, third down, it really helped, you know, to make sure that everything is uh, routed correctly and all the little sensors are where they're supposed to be. So it, it was definitely uh, not an easy task to do all the wires and everything, make sure that we are running everything properly. And this is a catch can uh, from IMS. Uh, this is for the radiator. If you overheat the radiator, you will not uh, spill the coolant, but it will be catched into this can and then it will uh, go back into the radiator. And usually you can slide them inside the frame, but for this Husky, we had to put them in the airbox. We are going to use this upgraded look from 2020 Husky and the pattern. It's a little bit different, so we had to get a bracket from Sykra. I think this is like 50 bucks uh, from their website. And then it will allow you to use uh, newer style fenders on the older bikes. Right, we wanted to go with a little upgraded look. So for the front, we decided to go 2020 and got this bracket. And then you can just bolt on the 2020 pieces. It will be a little bit offset, uh, like a quarter inch but it didn't really matter much because we had a headlight so it's it's already like the headlight already kind of stands uh, more forward compared to your number plate so it actually worked uh, really good
we got OEM levers for brake and for the clutch. We just ordered them directly from KTM. Now we decided to go, uh, first we decided to go with a big uh, oversized IMS tank, uh, so we had to take out the fuel pump uh, from the stock tank and install it inside in this oversized uh, IMS tank. But, but as you will see uh, towards the end of the video, actually we decided uh, to go back to a stock tank. It just worked better for this build. Uh, first we wanted to go with a bigger tank, but then uh, looking at everything and considering everything, uh, we just decided to go back and uh, stick with the uh, tank that will stack on this bike and keep this uh, IMS uh, for the special events uh, if Dallas goes for like the you know six hours race or something where he needs an extra fuel then we kept that extra. P3 Carbon that's a product I really like to use they are super light and durable they look pretty cool too so we went with P3 Carbon protection here on a skid plate. Now we're installing the, the computer from Trailtech. We went with Voyager. It's a little bigger, but still not that huge. So we were able to tuck it in nicely. Uh, you will see a little bit later uh, together with the number plate and the light and, and everything up front on the handlebars. So we installed the wire and the braided line for the brake and routed everything back to the handlebars. This right here is the unit. Uh, th it comes with different mounts. Uh, you can decide how to mount it. Uh, we decided to go directly on the upper triple clamps. And uh, there was just enough room for everything and everything is nicely covered and tucked in. So at the end it, it looks really good. And the computer itself doesn't look bad too, huh? Making sure our chain is uh, good length so we grind it off uh, some guys don't like to grind we just grind it no big deal there and make sure when you are putting your uh, little connecting link back together you grease everything because that's the seal chain so you want to grease uh, your connector link super sprack uh, gold chain we are installing right now And here we got our uh, piece from uh, Bulletproof that is uh, <laughs> correct size and everything, so we can install it. And also we got a part for the for the right side that protects your fork. One guy I know actually hit a rack with his bike and broke his uh, lower fork, so he had to buy a brand new fork for his bike. So it's not a bad idea to have that protected. Installing the radiator guards also from bulletproof and you guys notice that we are using a lot of black anodized uh, Pieces uh, and there's good reason for it. You know first we wanted to go with blue. The thing is that uh, blue from works connection Versus the blue from bulletproof and the blue from task and the blue from some other company is a different kind of blue So then when you put it all together, it just doesn't look good like everything looks a little bit different It's a different kind of blue and uh, with the black, usually black is black. So that's why we decided just to stick with the black, black color for all the anodizing to kind of keep that uh, uniform look. We are using stack black hoses that are uh, on the bike and then uh, bought brand new clamps for those hoses. Now replacing the little filter there on the tank. This is still IMS tank but uh, shortly after we realized that uh, we want to go back to stock. So bike is getting really ready to be finished. Uh, very soon we'll be ready to give it a shot and see how she runs. We are installing uh, all the necessity for that for your uh, air filter uh, filling with a coolant. Uh, we're using this uh, 
semi-synthetic uh, or synthetic blend uh, oil from firepower and also what we did uh, we have a new battery that is a lithium battery also from the firepower it's kind of funny because the battery comes uh, <laughs> in the colors that are very similar to the colors that we have on the bike it's just a coincidence but it looks really nice. It's a nice small battery, super light. It has this little indicator on the top. You just push button and see the charge of the battery. It also has a decent cranking power. And this is one of uh, almost the last pieces here. We're installing the hand guards from Enduro Engineering, black frames and yellow shields for this bike. So this uh, pretty much completes the bike to the point where we were able to uh, start it and the bike was running fine and at this point we uh, we broke it in a little bit and took it over to uh, Twisted Development. I met with uh, Jamie over there, we have an entire video explaining what we did to the bike and uh, we you know put the bike on a dyno, connected it to a vortex ignition, connected it to a computer and uh, tune it uh, to the best uh, power that we can use on the trails that will not you know die on the bottom and will just work really great for us and this little piece uh, is my favorite this is a headlight from Baja Design the strongest light they have and it fits so nicely with the entire bike with our concept and it just looks so nice and make Dallas very happy <laughs> all right so this is uh, Without uh, stickers, without uh, fancy stuff, without a seat that is still with a moto seat, they are doing some nice design for us. And uh, as I said, we are getting ready to visit Twisted Development right now. So first Jamie was playing uh, with the fueling and gave us uh, the best map for the fueling uh, that bike was asking for. And then once that was done, uh, he was playing with different throttle openings and set the ignition curves. Uh, and there is actually 10 different ignition curves uh, on the Vortex ECU. Looks like this is becoming a tradition on our channel. Every time we are about to finish the build, we take the bike uh, just about 95% down to Jay's garage and we finish everything in his place. And I think it makes a lot of sense because Jay is helping me a bunch uh, through the entire build, helping with the parts and you know answering my questions and helping me with uh, everything I need. So it just makes sense that we finish all these little details in his shop. So we torque everything to the specs and make sure that uh, everything is ready. We uh, use you know torque wrenches and we install the, the graphics, bleed the brakes if we have to, install the new brake deadlines and just kind of make sure that the bike is uh, tipped up 100% ready because usually you know after we uh, meet like this and do everything we uh, meet the racer eggs or some other magazine and we do the shoot uh, for the bike right here we are drilling holes into our air box and installing p3 carbon breather to you know have a little more air for the bike
right guys so this is it husky fe 366 build is done tell us what do you think it's amazing <laughs> <laughs> give us a little more details come on uh i mean everything fit and finish it's perfect cool 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 so this is uh everything we did all this color combination the engine mods and, and everything and we just came back from a ride we were riding for like uh two hours three hours tell us what do you think uh what is the increase in the power compared to your 350 before Oh, it's, it feels like there's 10 more horsepower. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, it's... And where is the power coming on? Mid-range to top end. Mid-range to top end, right. And the bottom end, no pops, no hesitation. Like, I mean, it's... Twisted did really good on that. Cool. All right, so you saw that previous video. We went to Twisted and we uh, dialed it in with the Vortex Ignition, many different uh, throttle openings. So uh, we wanted to have the, the bike that will not uh, flame out on a slow technical riding. And I think we uh, pretty much accomplished that. Would you say so? Absolutely. Cool. So you also saw, guys, uh, Dallas was trying to come up these steep racks uh, on the first gear, just kind of feather the clutch and, and wheelie on the rack. And normally, if your bike is uh, is uh, stalling, is dying, that would be the situation where you will uh, flame out and stall. But this bike, we didn't really stall today, probably at all. Did you stall it? Just amateur times, just once or twice. Okay, so once or twice, uh, <laughs> that was his mistake. Anyway, uh, it, was, uh, it was really good. Uh, bike runs amazing. Uh, I did also some riding on it. When you hit that mid-range, it front wheel goes up, and it's really so much better than before, and doesn't die, and it, it felt really smooth, and power is like, it's really exciting. So let's talk a little bit more about uh, work that has been done to this uh, to this bike uh, i'm gonna try to mention every uh, detail we did all the companies so if i uh, skip something uh, you can chip it all right so first of all the engine was done by uh, brett from parapros uh, we took everything ap apart and then we did a full uh, full range rabbit kit uh, you can call it that hot rod uh, we rebuilt the crank with a hot rod and then uh, we put big bore from uh, cylinder works that comes with a vertex piston the head was done by oem staff your valve train everything is oem there and then once the bike was together we also did a full hinson setup and uh, boysen border cooler and so once that was done uh, <coughs> engine was done then we sent a frame to San Diego part coating and did this uh, I think a beautiful blue color we call it the baby blue it just uh, stands out and the bike looks so much different than everything else right Alas? it was a good call it was a good <laughs> was choice a good so we we had a little uh, opposition there but we are now super stoked and happy that we went with this blue color because it it does look amazing with the blue yellow white and i think we really nailed the graphics uh from decal mx and uh, the moto seat seat cover everything looks amazing so once you put all this you know everything together when we sit down and look at the bike man uh, i think uh, this is the most beautiful bike uh, I had on my channel and then that I built. I didn't build so many bikes, this is number three, but it really looks amazing. All right, so once that was done, we rebuilt everything, uh, all the bearings rebuilt by Factory Lynx uh, bearing kit uh, in the linkage, in the swing arm, and uh, we did also in the uh, steering stem. Racetech did a suspension front and rear complete rebuild uh, set for uh, 200 pounds 195 <laughs> 195 <laughs> i forgot sorry man for 195 <laughs> but fast 195 off a rider then uh, we did full task uh, wheel set up uh, with a super sprock sprocket uh, oversized brake rotor in the front and uh, dunlop tires front and rear uh, 8081 that's for your off-road riding then we have uh, fastway pro motobillet kickstand food pack from ims and also we have ims catch can that we uh, are hiding here in the in the airbox uh, so if we overheat the bike and then some fluid comes out it will catch uh, in a catch can so it'll be all good then also to keep the bike cool we have a trail tech fan and uh, from trail tech we also have a voyager with uh, GPS and you can you can load the ma maps in there and it's just a lot of uh, good stuff that you can store in a computer. Uh, Petri carbon protection, uh, your skid plate and also we have these Petri carbon things. Uh, we drill the holes and uh, put these Petri carbon openings uh, to suck more air into the airbox. We got a fast way linkage protector that is also adjustable so you can adjust the height of your bike right there. We're running ODI grips, TM design work, chain slider and chain guide. Uh, bulletproof design has a lot of uh, pieces on this bike we did uh, pretty much all the protection for the front uh, brake rotor for the front uh, front uh, fork on the right side uh, we have the swing arm protector in the back and also the radiator guards 
and also on this on the other side the shark fin and the brake caliper protector everything is bulletproof design and uh, it's bulletproof and it looks pretty cool too so it's really cool over there Baja design uh, is a little upgrade to the front. This is the strongest light they have and uh, it's super bright and also looks amazing and it fits everything together so I think the bike looks so much better with uh, with this kit. Also what we did, uh, we changed the look of the bike from uh, 14 into this uh, 2020. So we had to do the bracket, right? We bought the bracket. Who, who's selling the brackets? I think it was Sykra. Okay, so if you want to do this upgrade, there are two companies that have the brackets, either uh, Nylo, Nylo Concepts or what do you call it? Yeah, Nylo Concept. We have this grip tape from them. They have the bracket or you can get the bracket from Sykra and then you can uh, use the 2020 front end, you know, you know fender and this uh, number plate uh, from 2020 model. So I think uh, it just brings everything up. It, it looks so much better with this upgraded uh, stuff in the front. We are running full uh, UFO plastics, uh, all in white color, and uh, as I mentioned, decal MX and motor seat on the top, Endure Engineering handguards, and a full FMF system. So yeah, once uh, this was everything done, we did this full FMF system, and uh, we got Vortex ignition on it. And Jamie at Twisted, uh, you saw the video, uh, did. Uh, his magic and this bike really shines it's really amazing it doesn't style it has great uh, power curve it's very linear and it, it hits nicely in the in the mid-range it's just such a blast to ride this thing yeah we have bars from fly and uh yeah awesome gear yeah we got cool gear too <laughs> we also did a shooting with uh, racer x should be coming out soon so once it come out i'll definitely put it uh, below in this video and uh for now dallas just uh Put another 250 hours on this thing and hopefully hopefully you will enjoy it so i want to ask you uh how do you like the final result and would you be willing to do it all over again if you are in the beginning absolutely yeah absolutely i'd do it again um i mean overall result that it runs awesome it the bike feels like home still like mm -hmm. i'm comfortable i got a lot of time on it cool all the new add-ons and oversized rotor always always yeah. helps can you feel the better brake yeah definitely better cool um foot pegs i mean the whole deal it's just it's cool. it's really comfy so does it would you say you you rode quite a bit of uh brand new bikes uh, with me on the channel mm -hmm. so would you say that this one now feel pretty much like brand new oh yeah so everything is tight everything is nice and smooth right doesn't make doesn't make clanky noises yeah <laughs> <laughs> the suspension and the bearings and everything right yeah all right, guys. So that, this is what you get when you replace your bearings, and then you you grease everything, and you have this uh, new stuff on the on the bike, and you have your suspension done by somebody who really understands what they are doing. The bike would really feel uh, like brand new. So uh, as I said, uh, now it's just time to jump on this thing and ride it a bunch, uh, put another 250 hours on, and uh, that's about it, guys. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the build. Let us know below in the in the comment section what you think about it, what you think about how this bike looks, how this bike runs, uh, color combination, and, and everything we did for the bike. We want to hear your feedback. And don't forget, guys, whatever you do, stay motivated. See you later.